Wonderful, great. Praise God. I like that. It's a great. My day has been great too. Praise God. God is good. All right. Um, the Lord, I believe the Lord is impressing on my heart tonight to share this message with us. You know, we're going to stay with it. Because um, this is one of the messages that God has given us in this church. You know, every now and then we can teach on so many things, but we we'll always come back to a message of faith, healing, prosperity, Holy Spirit, an end time message that Jesus is coming. How many of us believe that? He's coming soon. Praise the Lord. Do we know when? We don't. But we have to get ourselves ready. We have to prepare. That is why we have to be involved in every form of evangelism that we can to get the people to understand that Christ is coming. You know, the world might not like it. They might not feel comfortable with it. But it's the truth. And the master is coming. When he's coming, we don't. So we all have to get ready. Amen. 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 You know, when the world is saying peace, suddenly there will be calamity and destruction. Mm -hmm. So many things are happening. They're pointing that we're in the end time. Mm -hmm. You know, because the devil knows that his time, it's kind of having a feeling that his time is approaching. Mm -hmm. So he's mounting wars against the kingdom, mm -hmm. you know, in whatever form he can. Mm -hmm. You know, but thank God for God, because the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Mm -hmm. You believe that? Yes. I believe, yeah. So that is why, irrespective of whatever is weapons, whatever is uh, devices, we have the greater one on our inside, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Please say this after me, that I have, I have the, Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit on my inside. On my inside. He's putting me over, <laughs> over every difficult circumstance, over every difficult, over every difficult, difficult situation. Over every difficult. I am more than a conqueror more than through him, him through that me. lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We are an overcomer. We are an overcomer. All right, so we're going to, um, as part of a um, prosperity message, we're going to talk about walking in the fullness of the blessing. I believe that every one of us has the outline. Okay. Amen. But first of all, let's turn our Bibles to Third John. Glory to God. I'm glad that it's God's will for me to prosper. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Talk, John. Glory, 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 God. Talk, John, chapter 3, verse 2. Talk, John, chapter 3, verse 2. I told you. <laughs> so somebody got, got caught it, right? Yes. It's only one chapter. <laughs> so when I said chapter 30 verse 2, people were wondering. I just want to be sure that we all are Bible students. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so third John only has uh, one chapter. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. All right. Um, I'm reading from King, uh, King James. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things. Did you see that? I wish above all things that thou mayest pro actually let's start read from verse 1. The elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Verse 2. Beloved. Look at it. Is that beloved? Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us believe that the Bible is God speaking to us? Amen. Amen. I believe. Amen. Because sometimes we are often we're waiting to hear voices, to hear so many things. Yeah. You know? But God is speaking to us every day Amen. through his word. Amen? Amen? He's speaking to us every day through his word. So how can we get to know that God is speaking to us through his word? Because we have to spend time with the word of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Because, I mean, if I have, I mean, this is my wife. Mm -hmm. If we don't spend time together and I say, well, she doesn't talk to me, she doesn't speak to me. Do I even ever have a time with what will I? No. You know, I mean, she might not be speaking to me, but I at least I have to initiate mm -hmm. conversation. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. But praise God, she talks to me every day. <laughs> as a matter of fact, <laughs> sometimes she just feels that she bores. She just feels that she 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 um 
how do I please you overwhelms me to talk? <laughs> but I know that, uh, yeah, I've got, I have to listen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and God is giving me the grace to listen every time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Look at what he said. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Wow. That's awesome, right? Let me read it from uh, New King James. New King James. New King James says, Beloved. <laughs> when God <laughs> says beloved, mm. it's like God is saying that, my son, mm -hmm. my beloved son. You know, you remember when, G, when, the, when, the, when the Holy Ghost, I mean, when the Father spoke from heaven, he said, this is my beloved son, yes. whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. This is my will. This is my well-beloved son. Mm -hmm. Beloved son. So God is telling us tonight, he said, beloved. Beloved. So I can say, beloved. Tadi, beloved. Emmanuel. You know, pulling our names there. Beloved. I pray that you may prosper. I pray that you may prosper. Or it is my utmost desire. Utmost uh, will, uh, utmost appetite, I mean, utmost, um, uh, I don't know, what can I use right now? But above everything, mm -hmm. I have that I have a strong this desire for you that you will prosper. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That you will prosper. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I like that. that. I will prosper in all things. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, in all things. I will prosper in all things. Amen. That's a great confession. Hmm. Hmm. I will prosper in all things. So when others are not prospering, but I will prosper. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. I will. <laughs> I love this. He <laughs> says that thou mayest prosper in all things. Remember, he didn't say in few things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when the scripture says all, all means what? All. all. So, uh, Business-wise, maritally, children-wise, mm -hmm. everything. You know, if things are not going along with this world, what is it that we can do? We can stand against mm -hmm. the devil because that is not God's will for us. Mm -hmm. The will of the Lord for us is for us to prosper in all things. And to prosper means to have good sources. Yes. To have good sources. Mm -hmm. So in my academics, I should be having all A's. Mm -hmm. Whatever exams I'm doing, I should be prospering. Mm -hmm. You know, I should have, because when, when God says that I may prosper in all things, so that should be my desire too, that I want to prosper in all things, because that's his desire for me. Amen. 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 So, having a B shouldn't be something. That's not, that's not the, that's not the excellent thing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's A. It's A. In fact, it's A plus. Amen. You know, A plus. <coughs> You know, see, no, 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 because that's not God's will for me. Yes. And if God says something, does he have the power or the ability to bring it to pass? Yes, yes it does. Yes. You see, our mind has to be renewed towards God's word. We have to understand that this is what God is saying, <laughs> per se, at every time. We have to. Mm -hmm. You know, we shouldn't, we might not be experiencing it right now. But we should not make any excuse for it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? If we are not prospering all things right now, we shouldn't make any excuse for it. We should say, Lord, show me. Where is it that I'm missing it? I know this is not your will for me. Mm -hmm. We can go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Yeah, he said, bring forth my word. Bring forth your reasons. You know, if things are not going, I said, Lord, where is it that I've missed it? Help me. I want to correct myself. Mm -hmm. I want to change things, you know. Because it's not your will for me to stay low, to stay poor. Mm -hmm. It is not your will for me to live from paycheck to paycheck. What is going on, Lord? Help me. Help me, Lord. Amen. Lord, it's God. Help me, Lord. Please, let's put our phone to silence. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not your will for me to stay this way. Lord, what is going on? What is happening? Mm -hmm. You know, we, Because we have a, a humble heart before the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord will show us where we're missing it. I remember a man of God. He said he's been in the ministry. It's like, it's like, it's almost like he's living from paycheck to paycheck. Things are not going right and all that. Mm -hmm. He said one day he came back, Brother Keith Moore. 
himself fell flat on his face and said, Lord, I know that whatever is happening in my life, you are mm -hmm. not responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Because God is good all the time. All the time. It's good. Because his will for us is goodness. Yes. So, Lord, what is happening? Show me, show me, show me. <laughs> so, we just cry before the Lord. What is that? This is not your, this is not your will. <laughs> you know, he holds back taxes, about $12,000 back taxes. You know, you know, so many other debts, so many things. It's, it's just like struggling financially. And it's not he's in the ministry. He's doing his, God's will. And he said the Lord began to start showing him things that he needs to be doing. Things that he needs to be doing. They said he understood that, first of all, he needs to develop his faith regarding prosperity. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is the word for healing. That is the word for prosperity. That is the word for, uh, for Holy Spirit. That is the word for divine protection mm -hmm. that covers every area of our lives. Mm -hmm. So he said, the Lord began to show him. So he said he began getting people that teach messages on prosperity, financial prosperity. Yes. And he began listening, he began listening. Began to, start, began to teach it also. Began listening, began to teach it. He said, little by little, little by little, it started coming up. Amen. He said, he got to a state that Malachi was fulfilling in his life, that people were giving to him, you know. Of course, what, part of what God showed him is to be sowing. Yeah. So be a tither, mm -hmm. be a giver. He said, once in a while, it's just tight. You know, once in a while, <laughs> not a consistent tither. So he said, he did something. He has an account, that that account is dedicated for tithes. Amen. So as the money comes, certain percent just go psh. So, so that before he pays all his bills, anything, he took out God's tithes. God's tithes. He said, he took it out. He said, he has that accounts. And he noticed that began, he began to do that. Things were coming up. Things were coming up. He said, in the giving, maybe you used to give like $10 and all that in the, in the girlfriend. He said, he bumped it up to $25. Bumps it up to $50, bumps it up. Because he said, I mean, he said I mean, because the word of God says, he that sweat bountifully shall reap bountifully. You know? He said, God, listen to the message of prosperity, tithes and offering. It began, it began to, and it began to come up. It began to come up. It began to come up. He said, in his own, he has a lot of things. People were giving to him because he's been a giver, folks, too. He's been tied up. So people were given. It's all until a particular day. His neighbor asked him, he said, what is it that you don't have? <laughs> what is it that you don't have? He said, he have. He asked us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Please, let's put it in silence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. So he said, he began. He began to come up. He began to come up. He began to come up. And at the end, you know, so that, man, the word works. The word works. Prosperity, Thank that God's prosperity is God's will. Thank you. Amen? Thank you. Amen. And he says sometimes when he, he goes, teaches some other things, and he found out that his faith concerning prosperity is kind of really low. He said he would go back to the word again. Mm -hmm. Pump the word of faith mm -hmm. to himself. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Pump the word of faith to himself. Yes. Amen? Amen. Is somebody getting blessed? Yes. Glory to God. So he said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in earth. So financial prosperity is God's will. Mm -hmm. Physical prosperity is God's will. You understand what I'm saying? Prosperity to prosper in all areas is God's will. He said, Just as your soul prospers. Did you see that? Just as your soul prospers. Just as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So, the prosperity of our soul is tied to our health mm -hmm. and our physical prosperity. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. The prosperity of our soul is tied to our physical prosperity, healing, health, and also financial prosperity. Now, what do I mean? Because there are a lot of people that they believe that they, that, they, that they believe that having money is evil. Mm -hmm. They just believe that they say having money is evil. Mm -hmm. And some will say, Lord, I don't want to have too much. Just give me enough. <laughs> Let me just have enough. But to number one, having money is evil. Money is by himself could be evil. 
Okay? But whoever is handling this makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? Whoever is handling this makes a difference. But the thing is, money is good. <laughs> money is good. Money is good. Because there are a couple of things that we, we, we would love to do, but because there is no money, you cannot do it. So money can be like a, a limiter. Mm -hmm. You know, can limit our progress in life. Mm -hmm. In life, even our progress in the ministry. Mm -hmm. That's right. In the things of God. There are a lot of preachers that they are seriously anointed. Yeah. Seriously anointed. But <laughs> they don't have the money to even take the message out there. Yeah. To take the message out there. And if you can't take the message out there, how would they hear yeah. The scripture says, how would they hear mm -hmm. except, except they've been preached to? Mm -hmm. But I see God changing our story. Amen. Amen. I see God lifting us up. Amen. That is what God is. That's why God is in presence on our hearts mm -hmm. to go back again and get his word mm -hmm. concerning prosperity. You know. So some people say, well, the money is the root of all evil. No, it's not mm -hmm. the money. It's mm -hmm. the love. Mm -hmm. The love of money, money is the root of all evil. You see, when we put money in right perspective, we'll find out that it's a great instrument mm -hmm. for us. You understand what I'm saying? It is a great instrument. Now, the <laughs> devil understands that money is a great instrument, it's a weapon. That is why he's making sure that it doesn't get into the hands of the church. Mm -hmm. Because he knows that some of us in the church, we know how to make use of the money. Yes. Yeah. How to make use of the money. On our Facebook, on our Facebook, at least in a week we spend, at least in a week we spend not less than forty or fifty dollar to do advertisements, mm -hmm. and people are getting blessed through it. Getting blessed. In fact, there was a time that we all, there was a time that we spent in a week almost like four hundred dollar mm -hmm. just on just in a week on our, on our advertisement. Mm -hmm. You know, at least based on our own level, you understand in this ministry. There are ministries that they spend millions of dollars on television ministry. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are taking the gospel out there. Yes. And people are getting blessed. So what about if they don't have the money, how would they be able to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, let me show you something. Just this week alone, just this week, just this week alone, people that we have been able to reach through our Facebook page, because it, it, gives, it usually gives us uh, like a summary of uh, what we have been able to do weekly. Just this week alone, it's loading up. Now, this week alone, it said this week, so it gives the summary. That's our Facebook page. It said this week we have 51 likes, the likes our page, because we have some messages, like messages over the weekend. We put a short clips on it, then we promote it. We pay some money. Okay? So, this week alone, we have, we have been able to post to reach 110,700 people that they've come across. What is on our page? Mm. 110,700. So the total reach that we have right now is 1,101 1, and 18. Mm. 1,101 and 18. Engagement means people are making comments, like uh, showing things, yeah. showing interest and all that. We have 6,219. So if we don't pay the money, how can we reach them? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because the age that we have right now, it is so much of age of technology where you can sit down in your living room or your bedroom mm -hmm. and you can be reaching millions of people right. all over the world through technology. Through technology. I mean, we are, how many of us are here? Mm -hmm. But God is expanding us. So that's one of the things that God taught us. That look, don't always look into how this seat, this seat. There are ways that you can increase yes, your effectiveness. Mm -hmm. There are ways that you can affect lives on the run. That's what God taught us. So put a short clip of your video message, put it on the Facebook page mm -hmm. and promote it. Yeah. You know, we have many, many testimonies, many, many testimonies, mm -hmm. many, many testimonies that God is, is, uh, is helping people with. Now, so money, money, I mean, the, the love of money is the root of all evil, but money is not, is not, it's the root. You understand? The root of all evil. No. It is the love of it. Remember that I said that money is good, 
You understand? Mm -hmm. It can be good, it can be bad. But whoever is using it now is not, is not going to show the results. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? For instance, if some well, some of these uh, celebrities that ha they have the money, they are using it to what in negative way. So when people, when we look at their life, say, "Wow, man, I don't want to have that kind of money. Yes. The money that will make me this." No. The thing is, what you should say is, "I don't want to have that attitude towards that mm. money." You understand what I'm saying? That attitude towards that money. Oh, glory to God! If I have a billion dollar today. Oh, oh, hallelujah. This old neighborhood, by the special grace of God, they will know it. Just imagine, because we did, we did uh, a local evangelism. We bought some, uh, some items, grocery. We put it in the car, vehicle. We, we went to the neighborhood. And we parked the car. We put it in a plastic bag. So my daughter, my son, I mean, everybody, we had, we had a, a plastic bag. We would knock their door. We say, we have a gift for you. So who I said this is from Jesus. The, the, nobody said he doesn't want. She doesn't want. <laughs> nobody. Nobody said she doesn't want. In fact, we part, we call them come, and by the time we say, okay, this is from Jesus, would you like us to pray for us? Yes, pray for us. And we'll let men into Jesus, mm -hmm. to Christ. Mm -hmm. Wait, especially God, we're going to do something like that again. Then I found out that with that, people's hearts are receptive. They're mm -hmm. open to the Lord. Mm -hmm. They are open to the Lord. Now, think about it. We had the money, but we made good use of it. Another person can have the money, can go into that same neighborhood and have a terrible party, drinking and all that, that eventually they, they shoot themselves, yeah. they injure themselves and all that. Okay, what is it that both of us we have used? We have used money, right? Yeah. We channel it towards a good path. Mm -hmm. They channel it towards what? A bad path. So, is the money itself the thing that is bad? No. no. So, it is the people that are handling this. Mm -hmm. What you do with the money, mm -hmm. how you use the money, mm -hmm. makes a great difference. It meant to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, that is why when, you know, when I keep saying that I will never be poor another day of my life, mm -hmm. that money mm -hmm. comes. Mm -hmm. Poor another day of my yes. life. Yes. And that I will never be broke another day of my life. Mm -hmm. That money cometh to me now. That money cometh to me now. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Because it's very important. Because I understand that, number one, God doesn't want us to put money first before him. He wants us to put it first. And his kingdom first. You understand? Because look, reading through all the Old Testament, I found out that everyone that walked with the Lord, well, faithfully, that they put God first, they were never poor. Yeah. They were never poor. Yeah. They, were, they were never, never poor. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Solomon. Mm -hmm. Solomon, when he, he loved the Lord because he took after his father David, he loved the Lord, he made a thousand bonds offering in a particular day. Mm -hmm. That same night, God appeared to him. He said, well, tell me, what is it that I can do for you? When we say with God, all things are possible. And it's God that can say something like that. Yes. You understand? Because there is no limit to what we can ask God. You understand? Because the Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Able to do exceedingly. Able to do exceedingly. Which means, he can do far beyond our imagination. Our asking. Our thinking. Everything. Can do far beyond. So it's God that can ask a man like that. You understand? Because... If somebody asks me this, I will say, ah, are you sure? <laughs> you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Are you sure you're asking me to give, you're, you're giving an open check, blank check, to fill her in? Yeah. Are you sure? Because I want to be sure first that he has the that means. That kind of money. Yeah, that kind of money. The yeah. means and the capability. The check won't bounce. The check won't bounce. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. That the check won't bounce. You know? So I'll first of all ask him all that. May God is a God that has unlimited Hallelujah. resources. Hallelujah. He has unlimited resources. Mm -hmm. Everything that he has planned or everything that he has said, mm -hmm. he has the capability to bring it to pass. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah, he has the capability to bring it to pass. You know, he has. So when he told Solomon, he said, 
Just ask me what is it that I can do. But think about it. Solomon never asked for money. No. He asked for wisdom. He said, look, look at this, your great people. Who can rule this, your great people? He knows that he's a a child, but he needs wisdom. He understands something. That he needs wisdom to be able to discern between good and bad, to be able to judge these people rightly. And think about it. Remember that Israel, they are God's people, right? They belong to God. They are God's people. So if God spoke to uh, David that your son is going to be the one to be a king instead of you, that is going to, after you have done, after you have gone, done and gone, your son is going to be the one to be the king. That even your son is not going to want to build my temple. You understand? So God, so Israel, they are peculiar to God. So they are, it's God's business. You understand what I'm saying? God's business. So the guy puts the business of God because he wants to be sure that he's able to run the business of God very well through what? Wisdom. Mm. Through wisdom. So he never asked for money first. And when God will answer, he said, wow, you didn't even ask for money. You didn't even ask that. You don't even ask for the life of your enemies and all that. Hmm. Said so this wisdom I will give you. That there will be no any king that will surpass you. And on top of that, I will have the riches and honor. That no any king will be like you. In wisdom and in riches. Did God do it? He did it. He did it. In fact, a particular, a particular queen or so, he said, he said Queen of Sheba. She came. She, she, she wanted to come and test is wisdom. Mm -hmm. After she listened, man, he said, wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is real wisdom from God. That, I mean, when they told me, I said, well, I have to come and hear it. Mm -hmm. And she gave so much to Solomon. Solomon was very, 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 very rich. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about it is, when God gives us word, sometimes our mind always think, oh, or maybe, let's say the word of God concerning us, the Bible. Yeah. When God says, you will be the head and not the tail. When God says, though, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though Christ was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty he might become rich. Ah, rich? Whoa, rich? Ah, how can that be? Look at me now. But I found out something that your level doesn't depend on the actualization of God's word. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Your level doesn't depend on the actualization of God's word because the word of God is coming, actually coming to your level to bring you up. Amen. To transform you. Yes, to make you to be what God has spoken. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So not actually look, trying to figure it out. Think, okay, oh, so how would it be? How would it be? Ah, I, don't even, I don't even have this. I don't have this. God knows that you don't have that. That's what the word is coming to you to transform you. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. To transform you, to bring you to the level that he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God is not a man that is your life. Mm -hmm. When we put the kingdom of God first, the things of God first, money will come. Amen. Money will come. Amen. It might take a while, but it will come. That's, right. That's my greatest consolation. So I don't care what is happening right now, what is happening. I know that God is faithful. Amen. He's faithful. Amen. What God has said, he will do. He will surely, he will surely do. Amen. So what I need, just need to do is believe. Keep looking into the world. Keep pumping myself with the word of God. Before I know it, my lives will begin to change, begin to transform. Because I believe the word. Do you believe the word? Yes. Hold on to the word. Glory to God. So God says here that, beloved, I wish, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in hell, just as your soul prospers. prospers. So money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money. Our mind has to be renewed that God wants us to prosper. You understand what I'm saying? Our mind has to be thoroughly convinced that God wants us to prosper. Why? Because Remember the scripture says, as a man thinketh and is that. So is what? So is it. So we have to let the word of God change our thinking. You know, not a mediocre level. I remember a particular time I was wearing a particular sauce. I look at this sauce. I showed my wife. I just, oh, come on, this, this sauce is not for me. I just threw it, put it in the trash. <laughs> you know, I look at it, there's a what kind of sauce is this? You know, you know, sometimes because of our mentality of uh, 
being able to, um, how do I put it, um, say we are managing things. Please don't get me wrong. It's good for us to you have a sense. Well, yes. Right. But, but sometimes we are so much taken up in it mm -hmm. that it seems that ah, we, can't, we can't let this go. Okay, so because we can't let this go, we can't let this go. So we, we, are, we are so obsessed with it that we just got to keep it. Because we don't know, we don't know where, we, we can't say another one. one. <laughs> because there are people, there are people that things that for some reason they just hold on to that thing, things that have been used for 20, 30 yeah. years. That's now, what kind of thinking is that? That's what, uh, poverty mentality because they don't know if another one is going to come again. Bondage. Bondage. Yeah. Please don't get me wrong. I know that we, we have to be a good manager of God's resources. Mm -hmm. But the people, they know that man, ah, they can't let it go right. because I don't know where another one is coming again. Yeah. No. You got to let it go and trust God for a better one. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's just like, uh, it's, it's just like uh, the, the TV. You know? Everybody knows that the common TV right now is the flat screen, right? Yes. <laughs> it's the flat screen. Yes. But it's the, 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 the box one. Yeah. <sighs> it's like, cool. Like, it's cool. It, exactly, it's cool. I just like it. But <laughs> in, in, a lot of the time when they say it's cool, I just like it. It's not. They just can't say, you know what? I don't know where the money is going to come for me to get another one. Mm -hmm. But God is saying this. You have to think like I think. Now, that kind of thinking limits God's power in manifesto. Mm. As a man thinketh in his earth, so is he. So our thinking has to be a prosperity thinking. Our thinking has to be a one that we are not depending on our circumstances, but we are depending on God to help us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, when you get into some people's uh, garage, Oh my goodness, you will see things that they should have even sown up, sown up, give out, yeah. but it's still sitting down there. Mm. Mm. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, so let's back to our, to our hardline right now. That's, a, that's a, like a, a foundation. So it is good for us to have a good thinking because our souls has to prosper. Mm. We have to understand that it's God's will for us to prosper. Amen? Amen. So walking in the fullness of God, of the blessing. Uh, let's open to Romans 15, 29. If anybody sees it, they can read for us. Romans 15, 29. Hallelujah. Romans 15? Yes, 29. That I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Amen. Look at that word. It said, and I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So that tells me something that God wants us to walk in the fullness of the gospel. Now you see, the gospel is a good news. It raises the good news. Mm -hmm. The same goodness that Jesus said in Luke and in Isaiah when he was, he was caught in Isaiah. Okay, let's open there so that you can understand that the gospel is the good news. So Paul is saying that even when I'm coming to bring this gospel for you, I'm going to bring the fullness of it. Amen. So it's not, God doesn't want us to have, have full blessing. Amen. He wants us to have what? Full Amen. blessing. God is God of excess. Amen. When I need excess, I don't mean that God spends things lavishly and all that. In the sense that when God blesses you, he blesses you in excess. Because you are a channel of blessing. We are a channel of blessing. When he's blessing you, he wants, us to, he wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. So the people that say, God, just give me a little bit of money, that's how I'm okay. They are what? They're selfish. They're selfish. Because just imagine... You see somebody that is dying, that is dying in the hospital, that they, they're going to throw him out, that if they, he doesn't have the money to pay the bill, they're going to throw him out. I know over here we cannot do that because of the law, mm -hmm. but back home, yeah, the doctor will say, if you don't have the money, it's a goal. Mm -hmm. 
And for that kind of person, and you heard about it, you asked, how much is the bill? Mm. So we have to do this surgery for this person, and you, you single-handedly, mm. yet, single-handedly, you pay the bill, and this person gets better, and is alive. Mm. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. yeah. Because you have been able to put joy in the, into the life of that person. You have been able to avert death in the life of that person. So for us to now say, Lord, just give me a little, you know, myself, my wife, my children, that's all. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. No, no, no. That's selfishness. Mm. That's what? That's selfishness. Mm. Our prayer is, it should be like, Lord, make me a channel of blessings unto many. A channel of blessings. You know when they are saying that when we need, they need this in the ministry, the pastor is not rocking his head, oh, where are we going? No, no, they say, pastor, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Of mm -hmm. they're saying that somebody, if there's a particular school in Africa or in third world that needs something, like pipe, bone water, things like that that could make life better for them, yeah. say, don't worry, we'll, we'll pay it, we'll do it for them. Mm -hmm. Or even in our community, yeah, there are people that are hungry. That's right. Yeah, that are hungry. Mm -hmm. Like every two, two weeks, we, when we, we have a truckload of groceries, people will line up. The one, the one that we did, people came. Amen. And they were happy. Mm -hmm. You can see the joy in their face. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them don't know where the next meal is going to be. Despite the fact that there are a lot of opportunities around, even some people have been turned down, even from the welfare. They turned them down. Even Medicaid or whatever, they turned them down. That's, the lawyer will say, or maybe they were out of job, and they were, they were trying to get a cash assistance, but they denied them. And lawyer was send a, 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 like a pamphlet that you have been denied of some, uh, some benefits. Call us, let's take it off. Mm. That they don't even know where the next meal is going to be. So for me now to now say, you know what, uh, God, just give me money for myself, my wife, my children, that's all. No, I am selfish. Yeah. That's, not, that's not the way God mm. thinks. If God can say we should take care of the widow amongst us, yes. if God can say even the poor, we should not leave them alone, we should take care of them. You can see that God is compassionate. Mm -hmm. And the compassion of the Lord should be welling out through us because we are his representatives on heart, on earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at that. Look, uh, look, look, look to the, the fullness of, of, the, of, of the gospel. The fullness of the gospel. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Because Jesus is quoting Isaiah, I think chapter 60. Can you close the door very well, please? So that we don't disturb them. So Paul says, he said that I may come with the fullness of the gospel. The fullness of the blessing of the gospel. The fullness of the blessing of the of the gospel. Mm. So, the gospel is what is good news. Mm. Amen? Amen? You believe that? Yes. Amen. You know, we, 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 I, we, we're not in a hurry. You don't know that, right? Mm. Because we're sitting drinking from the word of God. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said the fullness of the blessing. The blessing. I mean, the, the, the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. Look at verse 18. Because the gospel is a good news. the great news. So if God wants us to have the fullness of that gospel, Amen. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Oh man. Please, let's say this, that God is good. God, God, God. Is good. God specifically anointed the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for purposes. Mm -hmm. And everything that he anointed Jesus Christ for, they are what? They are good. And to do what? To bless humanity. Amen? Amen. To bless humanity. Amen. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Oh. Please say that God is good. God is good. All the time. All and his good. mercies endureth forever. Glory to God. He's good. So God specifically anointed Jesus Christ. Look at this now. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So the good, what, what do you think is going to be the good news to the poor? Yeah, they become rich. Yeah! 
I'm telling you, if I if I can't find, if I can't eat, I don't have money to eat. You know, I can't buy McDonald's. That's what that's my need now. You know, if you are saying something else to me, you're not gonna get my attention. <laughs> when they say I'm a hungry man, is what? He's an angry man. You're not gonna get my attention. But when you say, I see that you have been, I mean, when you see me say, when you see me say, I see that you have been going around McDonald's, going around McDonald's. Do you think I need to buy McDonald's? Oh, yes. Oh, sure, sure. Thanks. Please. Then you gave me like $20. I went into McDonald's. Now, remember, when I'm going, when I'm entering the McDonald's right now, I walk in confidently. Okay. Why? Because I know that, man, that burger, that number six that I've been looking at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that number six, that number eight that I've been looking at, that I've been eyeing, looking at it. Right now, I can buy it. So when I bought it, I take. I said, oh, "Are you yeah, take out or eating? It in, <laughs> it in." Then I get my plate. I sit down. You know, get everything, get my drink, get my straw. Be eating it. What is it? I am happy. Amen. Why? Because my needs are met. So the good news that you gave to me, I mean, the, the, the meeting my needs is you gave me money because I am poor. I don't have the money to buy the McDonald's. So you give me the money. So that met my need. It caught my attention. You see? So the same way, part of the message of the Lord Jesus Christ is to those that are poor, that they don't have to be poor again. Amen. I agree. You understand what I'm saying? See, to those that are Striving, laboring, 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 that they don't have to, that you have to rest in my grace mm. and I will make you rich. Mm. Remember, we already understood that money, money is not the thing. Mm. It is who is angry. Right. We're putting God first, putting his kingdom first. Mm -hmm. So when I know that, that look, that the money is not the thing, but who is handling it? Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah.